the first 100 days in your job are probably the most important 100 days. This is a situation. You have been asked to lead a company. You are now the new CEO. You've been appointed as a minister or elected as a prime minister or even a president. Or you've been asked to lead a small team, become you know, the head of a small department. It doesn't matter. What we're going to talk about now is the first 100 days in the job. Why did I choose to talk about this? Because the first 100 days is probably the most critical part in your entire assignment, in your entire term as the new figure of authority. Now, it might be a situation where you, know, you might face a crisis or more that are severe and that might shape your term. These things happen, but still that doesn't negate the fact that the first 100 days in your job are probably the most important 100 days. Why is, it that, why is it so? Because it is what happens in this 100 days, in these 100 days, will shape the nature of the job that you will be performing. And probably even will shape your current and future career. Because I'll tell you why. We're talking here about being a figure of authority. And authority is super important for our life. In our social system, authority plays a fundamental role, regardless of the nature of the system. Family, you know, organization, society, country, doesn't matter. Tribe, you name it. On a professional level, authority, that we call a boss, plays a major role that impacts your life. So by default, we are designed to give authority a major significance in our life. And therefore, everything that relates to authority matters to us. Therefore, it is natural to expect that people pay authority, pay a lot of attention to authority. And because first impressions matter a lot, the first 100 days of your term as a figure of authority are super important. It is said that you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. This can't be more true when you have become, when you've just become the new figure of authority in your system, whether as a prime minister, president, a minister, you know, CEO, you name it. And while they're paying attention, what, they're, what is actually happening is that they're judging you. Now I know that the word judgment is not, in many cases, a positive word. We say it's not good to judge, right? And we say it's not polite, whatever, to be judgmental about people. However, if you look at the nature of reality, we are judging all the time. When you go to a restaurant, you look at a menu, you're making judgment on which food you think is tasty or on which food you think is not tasty to you. When you go to buy clothes, you make judgment on what you think fits you and what you think doesn't fit you. When you're choosing colors, you're making judgments on what you think is a favorable color to you or is not favorable color to you. You're always making judgment. When you choose uh, to go on vacation, you're making judgment on which place will fulfill the purpose of the vacation more than other options. So we're always making judgment. And the same mechanism will happen to you or towards you when you have been just appointed or chosen or elected or promoted to become the next figure of authority. People will judge you and will do that at a ultra concentrated way in the first 100 days. Why do they do that? Because they need to see who are you as a figure of authority? Who is going to be their new boss? What is this new boss going to look like? So they make judgment on a spectrum, on a wide spectrum of issues. I'm going to just, you know, mention a few. They're going to make judgments about your competence. 
whether you have what it takes to do a good job or not whether you're experienced knowledgeable you have the proper skills you have what it takes you know and to do um, to fill this space that you have been occupying whether you will be a competent boss a good boss or not so your competence will be judged also your personality will be judged they will decide in their mind whether you are an extrovert or an introvert cool-headed or hot-headed impulsive or rational or wise they will make this judgment and when they sit together and talk among among each other you know people that belong to your system and they talk about you these judgments will float you know they will come to the conversation he is so and she is so and they will you know elaborate and they will be serious about it and they will be they will care about what they say they would have because they would have paid significant attention to watching you as they form this judgment about your personality they will do the same when it comes to your character assertive or not assertive active or passive kind or abusive and there are hundreds of descriptions you know to characters they will choose one of them that they individually see that you know it describes you and they will label you with that description they will also make judgments on your attitude on the kind of energy you bring if you are a positive person or a negative person they will make judgment on your style how do you exercise your authority are you stubborn do you listen you don't listen you ask people's opinion you're patient you're not patient you're you're directive you care about people's thinking so they will make all these judgments they will also make conclusions and judgments about what they see is your potential in this job so they will have a feeling towards whether this is going to be is going to be a good president or not a good president this is going to be um, we're going to go into good days or tough days this go, this going to be he's going to be a weak uh, CEO or 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 a, or, a, or a strong CEO or the, this will the department flourish under you right and in, uh, under your authority or will it just you know uh, d diminish or die they will make all these judgments about your potential as a figure of authority as per what they have observed in the first 100 days they will also make judgments on the boundaries that you will set around you whether they are firm boundaries bold boundaries the boundaries of your authority whether you establish clearly you know the limits of your authority and you make sure that it's known whether you are an assertive figure of authority or you're flexible and how you deal with people across these boundaries of your authority they will also make judgments on whether you would be taken seriously or not where you act like a boss or they can just walk over you they will make judgments on the prospects of your future they will have conversations that say you know this guy is you know a high flyer this guy will go places this person this lady uh, this is, she's on her way she's flying they they will say if they see you you know as if they see this as the end of your career or as a platform for you know a much bigger much broader career so all of these dimensions will be judged and people will make their opinion and through that they will form your reputation they will construct your brand now it is up to you to decide in your own mind whether it is fair or not fair whether they are right or not right accurate or not accurate that's for you but doesn't really does does this really matter
I think it doesn't because what matters is that these people everybody around you will make their judgment either openly or quietly within themselves most probably to start with quietly and you can't argue with them whether their judgments are, are accurate or not accurate because they are built these judgments are built on their perceptions and they will act as if their perceptions is the reality that they see and they will deal with it accordingly and can you argue with the perception of the reality of the people i don't think so especially we're talking when you're talking about you know a group of people you can't go to every per every person individually and go into an argument whether their perception of the way they see your reality in their eyes is accurate or not accurate but it will happen they will form judgment and you will be branded and your reputation will be shaped and based on all of that the dynamics of the relationship between you and them will be determined or influenced and therefore the nature of your success or performance will also be determined because you will have to work with them and you need them to do the job that you're entrusted with doing now who will judge you first and foremost your boss or bosses will judge you in some cases you have a boss in some cases let's say you're a CEO you have a board of directors whomever your boss is an individual a group of people a committee an entity your boss will judge you and they will keep an eye on you 24 7 metaphorically of course especially in the first 100 days why do they do that to see if their choices were accurate if their choices were good if their your performance is in line with their expectations if their decision was a wise and smart decision if they feel safe that they've assigned you to this role if you're going to, to do a good job if whatever you're going to do as per your performance especially in the first 100 days that will say so much about you will assure them that the entity that you will be heading will be in safe hands or that you will create trouble so your bosses will be putting you under intense scrutiny until they form a judgment about you if that judgment is positive then that will shape the dynamics of you know the role and your relationship with them and will impact the way you perform and your career and if that judgment is negative then you can expect the problem that could be derived from that and the impact of that on your performance and the impact of that on your career and reputation also there is another layer of people who will be watching you very closely and these are the people who are close to your boss the people whom your boss trusts whom your boss listens to the circle that is surrounding your boss his fr your boss's friends colleagues advisors you name it these people also will be watching you and they will be making judgments and they will be passing on their judgment right communicating their perception of your performance to your direct boss as part of the dynamic of you know friendship as part of the dynamic of the nature of the relationship they have with your boss or when your boss asks them about you about how you're doing and about how they think you're doing when they when the boss asks for their input so that the boss can form his or her own judgment about you so that's the second layer your staff and your um, subordinates if you can call it this way will definitely be watching you so that they know the nature of the boss that they've just had they will observe every single move you do to form a judgment or to form 
a view on what kind of a boss you will be your colleagues will be watching you in your first 100 days to determine whether you're somebody they can cooperate with to determine whether you could be a threat or liability to them to determine whether they can trust you or not trust you to position you within the system that includes you and them and your collective bosses or the boss that brings you all together your clients or, co or constituencies will observe you to see what kind of a prime minister will you be what kind of a president or a parliament member will you be or what kind of CEO will you be all stakeholders investors shareholders whoever has a stake in the system that you're now heading as a figure of authority will be watching you your enemies will be watching you to assess the extent of your strength as a current or future enemy to them your competitors will be watching you to decide whether they should take you seriously or not seriously whether they should be worried about you or not worried about you and this is internal and external because trust me you will have internal enemies within your staff within your colleagues within I don't know the circle that surrounds your bosses we're human beings and we have all kinds of relationships and some of them will be you know a relationship of you know tension or animosity or conflict of interest or lack of chemistry I mean who knows right we're complex creatures so you will have these kinds of tensions within the organization and outside the organization also when it comes to enemies and competitors maybe some of your colleagues could see you as a competitor maybe could they could see you as an enemy who is getting let's say more attention than they are getting from the super or the big boss the people who are running the current status quo will be observing you and judging you you go into an organization as a ceo before you've been appointed as a ceo the organization sits on a on certain pillars that has given it a sense of equilibrium there are you know usually there are power centers within the organization as part of the you know political landscape there are people who are sort of running the show or influencing the way the show is being run you know behind the scene or in an obvious way there are people who sort of have a web of interest and relationships and coalitions and alliances that is in some way or form managing or directing this organization now you come to this place as a new figurehead as the new figure of authority these people will be watching you and they'll be watching whether your nature as a new boss and your agenda and your attitude and your personality and your character and what you want to do and your attitude and the way you conduct yourself will be influencing them in a positive way or a negative way how will you influence the power that they have again as I said this will happen regardless of the level of authority that you have if you are a figure of authority if you are a boss it will happen it goes from being the president of a country to the head of a small department if you are in charge of people as a boss as a figure of authority the same dynamics will happen across the board it doesn't matter what's the what's the exact terminology of your title whether you're a CFO or a prime minister or a minister or a parliament head or a president or a CEO or a supervisor it doesn't matter because the dynamics are between a system and a figure of authority now complexity of course changes because whether I mean if you're if you're a boss over 10 people is different than being a boss over 10,000 people is different than being the president of you know 300 million people country right 
it, it's different than if you're running a company of you know 1,000 people. It's different than being the prime minister or the minister who is in charge of I don't know 25,000 employees. So the complexity level of complexity changes, but the core dynamics, the nature of the game, is the same. So all of these people, bosses, people who you know are close to the bosses, staff, colleagues, clients, constituents, enemies, competitors the current you know, centers of power, all of these people will be watching you. And their f judgment, the, the opinion they will form, will mainly be split along two obvious dimensions or sides. I'm simplifying it, of course. They will either see you as an enemy, quote unquote, as a threat, to their interest, to the way they perceive, you know, your influence on their reality, or they will see you as an opportunity, either a threat or an opportunity. Either they will perceive you as somebody who is good news to them, and that depends on where they're coming from and the way they interpret how you've behaved over the pa over the first 100 days or they will see you as a threat again based on their current position and the way you have been conducting yourself over the first 100 days what are the key things that you should remember of course i'm being you know this is like 30000 feet view of the situation it's far more complex and it needs lots of analysis lots of work lots of deep thinking planning preparation because there's so much at stake in the first 100 days and as i said it doesn't start time zero does not start with day one at the job time zero starts at the moment you have been informed that you've got the job, you've become a, prime, a president, right? I mean, presidential elections, the winning president or candidate does not usually take over the new position the next day. There's a period of transition. So time zero, actual time zero, the real preparation for the success of the term over the 100 days starts from the moment they know that they won starts from the moment that you know that you've become the new CEO even before it's declared starts from the moment your boss told you about your promotion or you've been appointed as a prime minister or a minister the preparation starts from that second now what do you do to prepare there is an entire science methodology process that has been designed to investigate and to study and to perfect this period. It has been researched, studied, and there are clear strategies and roadmaps and recommendation and steps that you should do or you can do from the moment you have been informed to the moment that to the first moment you go into your office in your capacity as a new boss till the last day of the 100 days so i'm not going into the details of that maybe in future episodes i can go into that and that's a fascinating science i am fascinated by the dynamics that happens there because i've researched so much i've spent years researching the dynamics that are involved with authority because to me it's fascinating and this is part of the journey the moment you've been told that you're going to be the next figure of authority to the day first day the job to the last day in your 100 day you know uh, period as you uh, proceed in the new job so what are things that in my mind that you should remember everything you say or you do can and will be held against you I'll give you an, 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 an analogy that will make it easier for you. 
imagine yourself in this scenario there is a huge theater tens of thousands of people almost totally dark and there is a spotlight on the stage and somebody goes to the stage and says ladies and gentlemen I present to you so and so and you appear on stage directly under the spotlight in that very special and critical moment what do you think is happening 10,000 20,000 whoever is there in that place where do you think they're looking at you and you're under spotlight a light that's so intense even people sitting in the back you know maybe hundreds of meters away from the from the from the theater itself can see you clearly and whoever is sitting in the back maybe they have binoculars that they brought with them so that they can see you closely if you've been to the opera or you know open theaters it's often that sometimes people who are sitting in the back bring these you know instruments to help them see what's happening on the stage and the expressions on the faces of the actors or people who are performing on stage so it's the same scenario it's exactly the same scenario that's why everything you say everything you do can and will be held against you put yourself in the audience and it's announced somebody you don't know who this person is or you've heard about them that they're going to be coming on stage and singing what do you do how do you spend the first few seconds I bet you it doesn't take more than few seconds for you to judge if this performance act or voice or whatever they're doing is up to the standard brilliant or mediocre or a total failure or catastrophe few seconds because you're paying so much attention all your senses are watching every move they're doing I'm sure you've watched um, you know these programs about uh, America I got talent uh, uh, Britain got talent these these types of shows if you've watched them I bet that the moment somebody starts singing not only the judges but you yourself can immediately make a judgment if this person is good or great or absolutely phenomenal or they're just going to get an X and be buzzed out human nature so it will happen to you and you will be judged on every single word you say and every single behavior you do even the smallest thing the way you dress the way you walk the way you carry yourself the way you talk to people the way you uh, your body language the language that you speak the language the words you say and the way you say them all of them everything you do contains meaning and people will watch this and will derive conclusions from that and form opinions and judgments and reputation and brand what you should also remember is blind spots blind spots everybody has blind spots when you have been told that you're going to become the next figurehead CEO CFO department head supervisor prime minister minister president you have to remember that you have blind spots and when you go to this new pos position to start this new important job as being the figure of authority for that system and you go with your blind spot and the blind spot are still blind guess what will happen mistakes when will these mistakes happen in the first 100 days what's the consequence of that there will be black spot dots scored against you it will influence the way your reputation and brand will be shaped so you can't afford to have blind spots how do you protect yourself against blind spots there is an entire spectrum of uh, of practices of steps that you could do to make sure that you have all that it takes to expose these blind spots that's why people have advisors that's why people have friends that's why people surround themselves with you know with trusted individuals 
so that they can give them fair fair uh, fair uh, you know, feedback and of course the more informed and the more knowledgeable and uh, the advisors are the better is the input that they give you on your blind spots because they know what they're talking about and they understand the context of the job you will have vulnerabilities and if you don't pay attention to these vulnerabilities they will manifest themselves in the new job and in the first 100 days and actions vulnerabilities have consequences and this in this case the consequences of these vulnerabilities will influence the judgment of the people around you and therefore will influence the performance that you will have in the first 100 days and therefore the expected or the projected performance over the term you know of your assignment whether it is a number of years four years five years or open-ended it doesn't matter but it will project itself forward what you should also know is that what got you here will not take you there you might have been a CFO in the past but now you're a CEO well guess what what made you a CEO what got you to become a CEO does not necessarily will not necessarily help you or is enough or is sufficient to do a good job as a CEO what got you to become a CEO is not enough or the same as what you need to become a prime minister or a president just look at the news and see the multitude of examples around you and how people when they take a new position they do the same things that you they used to do in the previous positions and how that creates problems and people see that and they talk about it I have seen a situation where you know there were some ministers who became pre presidents and I've heard people say so and so still acts as if he's a minister he still has not understood that he's a president now or so and so still acts as a CFO or a COO or, or head of HR or head of marketing they still haven't and they haven't understood that now the job is about being a CEO and that takes a completely different set of skills or that this is a private sector a public sector is not a private sector this person came from the private sector to the public sector they're acting as if this is this is a private sector it is not these are different cultures so the point is you can't just say just because I was successful in my previous job or current job I will be successful in my new job as figure of authority prime minister minister president right because I know what I know some of them some of what you know might be useful but trust me a significant part will have to change you will need to learn completely new skills because you're dealing with a new reality new culture new context a new universe new dynamics and you need to learn that and guess when you need to learn it the first 100 days guess which part of the first 100 days as early as possible now do you want to be brilliant before you go there you start you should learn them before you take on the job before your first day at the job you should use the time the span of time that you've been given from the moment that you have been told that you have this new job to the first day you know reporting to the job you have this time right to do lots of preparatory homework so that when you start your first day you already you know you started with your right foot you started prepared ready the the possibility of making unnecessary mistakes are less is less in short you have been given an opportunity to fulfill the expectations of a new role and this new role is a very important role because it's a role of authority 
and authority is important because it influences the lives of people. What are the options in front of you? What are the possibilities? Number one, you will fail. Number two, you will do okay. Number three, you'll do fine, but you'll lose lots of opportunities to score big time. Number four, you will shine. And you will prepare yourself to what's next. You will turn this opportunity, this role, this assignment into a platform for what is more significant, a bigger role in life, in the public sector, in the private sector, in society, because you've done an absolutely amazing job. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, only a small minority of people are lucky enough or do what it takes so that they can create the fourth option of absolutely doing a brilliant job, of shining like stars and preparing themselves for even a bigger, you know, more impactful role. And why that is the case? Because they have done what it takes to prepare themselves on this transitionary period from the moment they have been informed about the new responsibility to the first day of the job to the first 100 day of the job until you know all the span until their reputation their brand and and the perception of people have been formed and they've created enough momentum to do the impact that they plan to do most of the people unfortunately fall into the majority fall into the you know the first three categories either they fail or they barely meet expectations you know mediocre plus or they do fine but they lose major opportunities to do an outstanding job for their for 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 the job itself for the work itself you know to fulfill the requirements of the job itself and an outstanding job also for their career so that it can be propelled to a higher level you have three options you either diminish or you barely survive or you grow and you soar and you glow what will determine that is this transitionary period and what you do in the first 100 days do that properly and the rest of the journey will be fruitful and easy you don't do it properly you will deal with crisis after crisis after crisis and you will mind maybe you will miss an opportunity of a lifetime because whatever you do is obvious to everybody and that comes with being a figure of authority <laughs>